Hi there, this is Wukash for Tech Travel Geeks. Finally, after some waiting, I got the latest software update for the right-hand drive Tesla Model 3. Called by some as the biggest software update in any car ever, does it live up to the hype, especially here in Europe? Let's see. The update process is trivial. Once you get a prompt, connect to Wi-Fi, in my case, my phone's hotspot, wait for the download to complete. I went on a small drive to pass the time and install the software. During the actual installation, the car can't be used, but it only takes 30 minutes and you can schedule it overnight. So, what's in this update? The biggest feature is Smart Summon, which allows you to press the Come to Me button in the app and the parked car will drive itself and pick you up. Hold on, it doesn't look like it's here. Yeah, unfortunately this feature is not available in Europe as it's pending regulatory approval. There are no news on if or when this option will be available to self-driving cars in Europe, so we'll have to wait. In the meantime, we have to live with the existing forward and reverse options. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like there's been any improvements to that. When reversing to my garage today, I had to cancel it as it was dangerously close to hitting the garage doors. I then tried reversing again, but the result was the same, so I had to park the car myself. Better safe than sorry, I guess. But this is just a single function of the new software. There's plenty more. And the best new feature has to be the theater mode, which allows you to change your car into a movie theater on wheels. You can watch Netflix on the lovely 15-inch screen with fantastic stereo anywhere where you can get wireless internet. That's just crazy. You also get YouTube, so you can check out some tech travel geeks from inside the car while waiting for someone or when your car is charging. Let that sink in. You can watch YouTube in your car on a huge screen. In the US, you also get Hulu for your TV pleasure, but it's not available in the UK. Instead, you can watch some instructional videos about the car, I guess. Since we're talking about videos, the browser has improved significantly and from a very slow and clunky one, it's become really usable. You can even watch embedded videos with no slowdowns, so props to Tesla for doing that. The most fun update? That will have to be the new game, Cuphead. After Beach Buggy Racing 2 is the second modern game on this giant console on wheels, and it's brilliant. I recently got an Xbox joypad and playing the game with it was a lot of fun. Just be warned, the game is really difficult, so you might be hitting the retry button a lot. And I mean it. When it comes to fun features, there's karaoke, which lets you and your friends sing along to some of the popular songs. You can find anything from Taylor Swift to the Cranberries to Queen to songs from the 1950s, so there are plenty of songs to choose from. An interesting feature for the road trips is I'm feeling lucky, which will suggest a nearby attraction. Great if you don't know the area you're in. Similarly, I'm feeling hungry will suggest a restaurant nearby. It will then navigate you to the place through the improved maps, which now allow you to see more information about places of interest and which will show a link to that place's website. I've not used those features yet, but I'm sure they will come in handy soon. What about autopilot updates? I'm not sure, the self-driving capabilities changed much to be honest, and it wasn't the focus of this update. One thing that has improved is the display of the car. When you change lanes, you can clearly see where the car is going, the outline of the lane you're on, and you can see the cars more accurately. You can also rotate the view to see what's behind you. I guess that might come in handy when parking, I just need to verify this. So, am I happy with the update? Sure, it's just mind-blowing that the car is becoming better with age and it will continue improving. It's unfortunate that Smart Summon is not available in Europe right now, with laws lagging behind technology. It's similar with electric skateboards and scooters, which aren't allowed in the UK. Similarly, self-flying drones like the amazing Skydio can't be used to their full potential as you legally need to have the drone in your view at all times so you couldn't, for example, make it fly behind you when riding a bike downhill. 
I hope the laws catch up with technology soon. I strongly believe that self-driving technology will significantly improve the safety on our roads. Thanks so much for watching! Make sure you leave us a like and subscribe to Tech Travel Geeks to be notified of our videos in the future. Bye!